Hello again, welcome to another edition of the Real Ale Guide. Today's beer is a boxed beer. Check this out everyone. Now I've not opened this. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. Saint Stephanus. And I'm just going to hold it here. Let me get the lid off. Here we go. A bubble wrap. Oh, what have we got here? Okay. Here's a nice letter from them and a booklet about St. Stephanus brand story. Okay, there we go. What you want to see though is the beer, don't you? Oh, wow. Right, okay, we got a fantastic glass. So, I want to, well, I'll be able to, let me show you the box. First of all, let me show you the box. There's the box. Look at that, eh? Nice bit of packaging. A couple of nice beers and a glass there. Now, I know what you're saying, people. I know exactly what you're saying. You're saying it's a bottle conditioned beer. Stand it up, leave it settle for a while before you drink the beer. Do you know what? Sometimes. Look at that glass, eh? Isn't that fantastic? Sometimes you've got to go against the grain. Sometimes you've got to show the whole thing, the whole picture, the packaging. I'm not going to be able to stand here and show you all the packaging without, without stirring the bottle up a bit. So, I'm not going to stand the bottle up for 12 hours, 14 hours. I'm going to grab a bottle out now. I'm going to show you, wow, I'm going to show you that fantastic cap. Look at that. What a lovely, looks like a hand decorated cap there. I'm going to show you this lovely label. Being Belgium, a Belgian blonde beer, it's going to be bottle conditioned. Nice signature on there. But... I'm going to get it open. I am going to get this beer open into a glass. Belgian beers, I was waiting for that. Belgian beers have a tendency to be quite, quite carbonated, but lucky for me, Lucky for me, I'm going against the grain. Boom, it's all working so far. It's behaving itself. But look at this for a glass of beer, eh? Look at that. Wow. That is all I've got to say is wow. Carbonation there, streaming from the bottom of the glass. It is a big three finger head on this kind of oversized goldfish bowl type of glass we got here. It's a Belgium Trappist glass. It's got that classic gold ring around the top. The colour of the beer is a slightly hazy, but it probably would be clear if I just didn't, you know, if I, if I did it how I should have done it, but we're not going to do that. It probably would be a completely clear glass of beer if I had the beer standing for 12 hours or so. So I'm saying golden in colour. The nose, let's get the nose. Oh, and I'm getting, I'm getting orange peel and I'm getting juicy orange. And I'm getting spices. I'm getting it, my, I'm getting it up, a no, up a nose as well. Oh, and it smells absolutely just juicy, juicy, fleshy orange, orange peel. I can smell the yeast. I can smell the yeast in this beer. It's 
quite a yeasty beer. They've got their own, I'm sure they've got their own yeast strain going on here. Should we dig in? Cheers everyone! That is a yeast bomb. That is what I call a yeast bomb. That is just. Do you know if you're catching this review as an off chance, as a, as a one-off, you've just found it on YouTube by chance. There is four main characteristics of a beer. That is number one, water. Number two, malt. Number three, hops. And number four, yeast. This is a predominantly a predominantly yeasty beer, and. Yeast has its own qualities. You really can get some wonderful, wonderful tasting yeasts out there. And this one is a wonderful tasting yeast. It's orange. It's quite dry. It's marmalade-y. It's, it's, it's quite wonderful. I was about to burst into a, it's spicy, it's really spicy, but then I kind of caught my tongue and I was, I was thinking, it is, it is really spicy and then I reeled it all back because it just, it just faded away nicely, it just went, no, I'm not going to wreck your tongue with all these different spices, I'm going to kind of stab out at you and say this is a really spicy beer and then before you know I'm going to pull it all back away again and it's going to be you're going to wonder what just happened to you <sighs> predominant orange and marmalade taste of this beer it is slightly spicy. Let's get this conditioning in, shall we? It is bottle conditioned. You can just see little specks there on the on the side of the glass. But I just want to read out, if I can. I don't think because I've. Just grabbed it out of the box. I haven't read any of the um, alcohol volume. First of all, it's in a 33 centiliter bottle, 330 milliliter, 7% ABV. It was released from the cellar in October of 2011. And look at that for a brewer's signature. Ah, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful stuff. And it and the, the sell by date is the 6th of June 2013. It means you can just leave it in the box for a year, in the dark, if you want. You can just mature it and it will probably taste twice as good. So, what am I going to do with the second bottle? I'm going to do exactly that. There goes the paperwork. There goes the lid. I am going to leave that for a year. You guys out there remind me that I've got this beer in a cardboard box, in the dark, in the back of my cupboard. In a year's time I want to be hearing comments saying, get that St. Stephanos beer out, let's see what it tastes like after a year. And I will gladly give it a review. Let's age a bottle of this stuff, shall we? Okay, time for a rating. For me, 
You would never believe in a million years that this beer is 7% ABV. You just wouldn't know. It is juicy, it is fruity, not an American type of juicy fruity, in a more of a obviously Belgium y kind of way. It's, it's, it's like a juicy orange marmalade. Really is a nice beer. A little bit of sweetness there in the malts as well. Not spoken about the malts much. It is a predominantly yeasty beer. But that is lovely. For me, I'm going to give that a 9. I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. That is a lovely beer. Thanks for watching me, The Real Ale Guide. Put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe if you like. And cheers.